Now that we successfully retrieved that data into our JavaScript function from the user input, let's go ahead and try getting that data back out onto the page. So right now we have a paragraph uh, with an output ID and we change it to Happy Wednesday. Well, let's say I wanted to display something beneath this button. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make another paragraph and this time I'll say it's an ID of uh, user text output. And again, I could call this anything. I'm gonna copy that just so I don't mistype it. And then down here, once I get this text, uh, I can put that down here just so this kind of happens in order. Once I get this text, I'll just say document dot get element by ID. And then we're going to reference this user text output. Okay, and then I'll say dot enter HTML, the exact same as we did with our first paragraph. And then I'll just say equals, and then that variable where we save that data. Okay, so watch what happens. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna save both of these and then come back to my browser. I'll hit refresh. Uh, we have, this is a paragraph. Uh, I'll type in, this is awesome, and call the function. And you can see it, it just ran through my code. It changed this paragraph to Happy Wednesday. And then it took my text and it put it down here in, in, another, in another paragraph. That paragraph was previously empty. If I refresh this page, uh, you can see the paragraph is here. You can see it being highlighted in orange on the left-hand side. It recognizes that it has an idea of user text output, but there's nothing in it. Right? But as soon as I type in something over here and hit call function, now that dot, dot, dot is there, and you can see that JavaScript basically injected that user text into, um, you know, into, that, into that paragraph that I had made there. Okay? In our next video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that JavaScript can do, like arithmetic, and then we can start getting fancy with our JavaScript programs.